is now behind us. Let's wish a good game here to Tech and defers both in seeing to a very good and well anticipated rematch many months in the making here on FOC. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, the setting up process for this clan battle and making sure that everything could go off underway was excessively stressing. But all the same, everything was seen to, and all is well. I'm gonna sit here and try and have a very out a general synopsis for the whole clan battle here, like I genuinely do in these situations, as always. Uh, it may be long, it may be short, it depends on your perspective, but I'm just going to go over the general details here on how this was all able to come together as it was. We're not the first ones in order to try to settle into a clan battle against Furs, but it was the only one that was able to successfully go through after a whole month of either ill timing or mismanagement or general procrastination from other clans or clanning factors that came into play from fellow clans that issued the challenge in order to see to the match with them but did not go through and so this was able to go through so just sit and relax unlike what I'm able to do here and just listen well we're waiting so let's get started Kicking off with the clan battle here that was originally set for October but got pushed back to November. Uh, this was following the outline that we had against either Intent or the Alliance of Chaos pending Alliance of Chaos's disbanding that had happened a month later. What happened here was the process in trying to recollect the number of people that I wanted to get on board. That way I can see to the next couple of clan battles that may or may not happen. But amidst juggling factors involving the GameFAQs board and overseeing said business going on on GameFAQs as well as shifting back and forth between PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 platforms overseeing Tax General Regiment on PlayStation 4 and seeing to in real life concern you can imagine how vastly frustrating and stressful that a number of factors can be for one's general sanity or personal time whether or not it would be illusionary or thereof so to speed up the general recruitment process i left this to other peoples in my stead in order to try to find me competent players that are vocal and cooperative with other people and i'm not even looking for good players anymore i just want reliable people that can help me in my cause that's all I want now. I just want people to just help me. I came across one other person from AOC past uh, by the name of Lionel. I remember Lionel, one of the pub stopping crews, a good friend of Moonwalker, AK-47, Diesel, and a lot of the old pub stopping crew. So I'm all happy to bring Lionel on board to tact if he's able to join or if he's free time. I have yet to actually have heard fret back from Lionel in order to give me my assured fourth player. The pending outline for FURS came up and we settled on into making arrangements on a weekend rendezvous in order to settle into Furious in their clan battle after the past outlines for the Alliance of Chaos and them that went through but failed. Outlines for Intent are still pending. Nemesis did not go through. Havoc was not able to go through, unfortunately, with Havoc's untimely disbanding. And... AOC, ACW went through, but did not go through on accord of many irresponsible or unreliable players. And on personal note, I will throw in there, not to sling mud, but from pure observation, you see how hard it is in order to have a whole group full of people, but when the time actually comes, none of them are actually genuinely reliable. So you see, I'm not the only one who has to face that battle. There's another group that faces that battle that seems to have it a lot easier than I do. But with a much harder sense of general organization, yet an easier time of having people follow your cause when it is unnecessarily negligent in many different aspects. But people would still prefer to go to the latter rather than taking a more sensible, judicious turn. Anyway, just food for thought on that notion. But back to my general synopses. With the clan battle then approaching, approaching I should say, for the showdown with Furs and Tech, I had to try and quickly see if I can find myself a fourth and a reliable fourth person. 
not to put the Lionel down, but if I'm not hearing anything from said person after I already went out to reach out to said person when said person or other people that found fourth person, this being Lionel, told me that he was interested in joining but has not contacted the clan leader, me, in order to try to solidify this bridge of opportunity, then this leaves me at a stalemate, and I don't need to be left hanging again on this situation. I'm getting tired of being left out of this shit. I'm getting tired of being given the short end of the stick on every single thing it is that I'm going to try and do for my clan, for my friends, for this community. It just rinses and repeats. It's like I'm constantly forced to keep bending over for dumb shit. <sighs> And so I went on ahead and just went out into pub myself. I went back to PS3, tried to put on a general happy face here in order to try and give myself a general positive outlook here, boost my own positivity here, go back out there, see if I can find somebody that I feel can work well with the team that I have right now that can wholeheartedly represent my team or can fight alongside me or who I can get along with, blah, 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 blah. I came across this one dude here that seemed to be fairly competently well and sociable, decent fighter, a friend of KG Primes, his name was a Star Agitant, which I'm surprised KG Prime is actually sociable types, but that was beyond the point. My point being was that I managed to come across this one individual here. Uh, Grimwave introduced me to the guy here, he seemed to be a pretty decent dude. I went on ahead and chopped him on board for the tact regiment and try him out. I mean, I, I honestly have nothing to lose at this point other than maybe four or five minutes of time or an added guy in a clan battle if the clan battle ends up being too much for him or if the next training session ends up being too much for him. It's all a part of the general dice roll that I am honestly wholeheartedly willing to roll because it's giving another guy an opportunity to have his own... Gr um. It's giving another person a chance to have his own identity in the community and to something about him. It's not just another guy that's just going to be a piece of constructive sheep in a whole herd of online people. He's actually going to be a guy that wants to do something. So, hey, why not? And so with that, I genuinely have my fourth dude, quote unquote. I have him, I got Dino, and I have Light in My Spirit. Done. I got my four people. So I could hop back on over to PS4 and then just try to settle in and try to write out some type of constructive piece for how the outline for the clan battle would go. And then I was updated by Dino or a friend of mine that says this was actually a five on five arrangement. <sighs> and so I had to think about where the hell I'm going to find a fifth person because I had to struggle just to try and find the magical fourth person in order to make this thing dance rue in the combat of war. <sighs> so... Luckily for me, I came across Raptor, Vazian, or Legion as they call him, and he was able to do me a pretty good favor here that we could pull. It was a favor that uh, he, I owed him for him back on WFC, so I might as well invoke it now. I mean, why not? So I asked him if he could go ahead and pull a fifth and be the fifth person in my clan battle coming up here with Furs, and so I said sure. And so with that on board, along with Star Adjutant, as long as Vazian's internet can allow, or... However that factor would be at, because I remember Vazian explaining to me on Facebook exactly how the whole situation with his NAT typing was, and so I can and I cannot work around that. But the more that his PS3 fires up, the easier it'll be for him to connect on to whatever it is that he's trying to do on PS3 and PS4, if he's even using the same tag or tags on PlayStation 4. It's just a matter of just changing the router or switching it off, unplugging it, plugging it back in, letting it reset and all that stuff. And so there we go. I have everything I need right there. I can set at ease and try to relax because to be honest, it has not been easy trying to relax at all for the past month. Try whenever it is I come online, like as soon as I come online, there's always a whole horde of shit it is that I got to do, which is why I honestly procrastinate being online or being visibly appearing or appearing visibly to a lot of people or to the populace of my friends lists or listings that way i can just be off and do me doing my thing on the side so i have other people trying to set to my arrangements if they can or cannot do this so the time i said clan battle did come up so we went on ahead and hopped into the clan battle on that saturday 
the only thing that set back the process of how any of this would go now was actually a game plan since after all this time nobody thought up a goddamn game plan in order to execute against furious and so i'm just like oh my fucking christ okay i'm just gonna look back on the vault real quick while we're assembling everybody here I went on ahead and I messaged Vazian about what it is I'm going to need him to go predominantly for the time he was going to be there, which I think was two out of the three games that were pending at that time. And so I just did a modified strategy of a past outline that I used years ago. And so I had to go back and dig up my files and try to just pull something out of my ass and see how this would work. Because I was hoping that people would think of an idea that would make this so much easier to work around but nobody thought of anything on how to tackle furs and all the main people that we're going to be seeing out there we're going to mainly be seeing pro seals mainly going to be seeing marvin gunners the oreos cookie man however the, uh, the cookie guy or bambi or the bambi dude like something like think about how it is that you would genuinely tackle overpowered players or players that are excessively skilled and knowledgeable of their surroundings how would you use the environment to their disadvantage and more towards your advantage thinking more towards the tag of adaptive and nothing came up so i looked back into my vault here and i pulled up uh, an original outline here that i had to modify for using um, a TFL strategy or the mat oh, my head the strategy that I originally had used for the Forgotten Legion back in 2016 it was a mod it's a strategy back then that me a7 and Brave Shadow anime had to tweak around a lot oh and hoodie can't forget hoodie it was a strategy that the four of us had to tweak around a lot in order to try to get over or tackle as best as we could against Aswin and Opti without getting clapped so fucking hard, but you still ended up getting clapped like an applause. And so what I had to do here was just slowly tweak everything about how that outline worked, put a little bit here, switch out key players. So the original 2016 outline incorporated trying to revolve an entire four or five man push against Aswin Optimus 543 and Jamaz. All I have to do now is just switch out those three players for pro skills for the win. Gunners and or Marvin and Venom 77 Mu. Boom, and we're done. And I can basically apply the exact same strategy there during the TFL battle that I can apply here during the Furious battle. Also, for curious minds wondering, yes, I actually do have a saved, contemplated strategy or series of planners or general player routines, like outlines of where players need to be, what roles I need them to be, what roles I need for each part of the clan battle and for each type of clan battle, whether or not it's going to be a light class type of clan battle or a predominant heavy class type of clan battle. People are going to be more towards using the environment to their advantage and play more tactically. People are going to be more aggressive. I have a strategy for practically every type of clan battle that TACT has ever had. I still have all incorporated here in my findings and my notes. I keep them all generally on a lot of pieces of scrap paper or on little napkins or however the hell. I just keep them all in a little portfolio here on my desk just in case any of them I happen to would happen to call upon again. That way it saves time of excessively thinking or overthinking every little situation when back in an easier time or in a more simplistic time in the community and or in the era of the fighting. In a more simplistic time, I would have already thought of and concocted the strategy for this exact moment, for this exact bill, for these exact people at this exact time. I would have already thought about it and I can just reapply it again rather than overthinking it and end up missing something. An added detail that I incorporated into this strategy when I was talking with the kids here on um, Skype is that Dino told me about the outline that Shadow was talking to him about regarding the outline for CEG and Havoc. And so we also incorporated what Havoc's strategy was in tackling CEG 
that general outline for capture the flag only is what we were able to systematically apply. The problem there was that not everybody was constantly in position, but we were able to continually be in position over time as the capture the flag portion did progress. So let me quickly go here in round one, which was on tax host. That was light my spirit that was hosting that. Here, while slightly laggy, it was laggy not in an inaccommodating way. It was noticeable only when you first signed into the session host, but after that it became fairly smooth the longer that you stayed on it. Honestly, I didn't notice it after a while. Again, it just comes with the perks of playing on lag. There were some people that were not really satisfied with doing this since the star adjutant had told me that he didn't really like being on the host, but I told him that it's okay to be on the host. It's one of the perks of playing on different connections is eventually you're going to come across a connection that won't completely cooperate with you, which is going to generate lag. While it's not always keen to play in lag, there are going to be some times where you may have no other choice but to try to work around it as best as you are able to. Remember, depending upon whom the host is, this is also a double-edged sword. It is not always one-sided. When it is one-sided, then it is fairly noticeable, and then that's where the necessitation of the redo or the do-over is suddenly on the table, depending upon respective or whoever it is that's the ref in this situation. Me being the ref of this situation overall, there's no point in having any necessitation of that being on the table because it's not that bad with anybody doing anything. Everybody here is generally, I would imagine, a fairly competent player and being able to work around lag to a pretty good extent with all of the past experiences having been intertwined throughout the community. The newer people or newer person that I brought on board with this, granted, I'm pretty sure it may not be his first rodeo working around lag, but I am confident that he will be able to work around it all the same because he's going to be around a lot of people that can help him and support him because it's not a one-man show in a clan battle. It's a team effort in order to have a team succeed in the same way for the same cause. Everybody's all fighting together here. It's all for one, one for all. And yes, while there can be some argument said to my statement just then and what not having a whole overpowered person or there being an overpowered person in a group, I'm very well aware that people also know my stance in having overpowered people be the core of a whole clan's function rather than having it be the balance of the clan's general survival. That whole argument was pitched on GameFast once upon a time, but that is way beside the point here. Anyway, getting back to talking about this in round one. The outline here was a, rem was a remodified TFL and Havoc strategy that I incorporated here, which everybody here was wholeheartedly able to comply and work around. And I was able to actually play to my strengths on this one. Dinah went on ahead and take, took the medic role on this, and so it allowed me to full, wholeheartedly play Destroyer, and so I can go head-to-head -head with Marvin and Guns. I can't remember exactly who the, um, who the medic was on Fur's side, but I remember seeing a couple of different scientists, I think. So the roles may have switched at a lot of specific or convenient times throughout the clan battle, which I wouldn't blame them if they were in a hugely cooperative mindset. They were able to play off of each other's strengths and weaknesses like what we were or probably could have done a little bit more effectively or at a more rapidly sound pace. The way that clan battle worked, it was a very rocky start for the longest road of that clan, for the longest road of that capture the flag session, and then we managed to get a point on the board. It was not a complete shutout, cause the call out that Dino and Star Adjutant made, both at the last second, and then Legion playing off of our synergy, it allowed a huge moment in which we were able to simultaneously capitalize off of and get the point, which prevented the full shutout. So Furs would not get a 2-0, and zero. it would instead be a 2-1 and one win in their favor. Unfortunately for me, I actually didn't stay to see what the thing was because my system froze like 50-ish seconds before the match ended. I wasn't able to stay around because my shit froze. So I had to turn it off and turn it back on in order to try to get back on and catch, the, catch it just in time. And so Dino and... Star Adjutant were told me what it is that had happened or how the how the match ended and so it ended at a two to one 
uh, was I don't know if we were in a position in order to get the second flag capture. We probably were not. But even though I disconnected, I'm still honestly just going to let the decision stand as it is because it was a complete session, even though I wasn't able to be there. There wasn't a heck of a lot that could have honestly been done just to bring that whole point back just for one just for one person. When one person could honestly sit out at that point, which I'm sure probably one of them may have done at that point because it, it would have been a 5-4 to four, and so I'm sure one of them probably sat out just to make it fair at the end in order for it to add up. And all that good stuff. And so Capture the Flag ended at 2-1 to one on Fur's win. I made sure to tally it down so that way when I log back in, then I could get an idea on where we stand next before we go on to Conquest on Fur's host. <sighs> that being said, that takes us into round two, which was Conquest on Fur's host. I, uh, I was, we were, a lot of us were able to connect, so I imagine it was either... Uh, Marvin or Pro Skills or Gunners as host for that portion of it because it seemed to be pretty smooth for the most part. That being said, uh, about a minute into it, I had I almost thought I lagged out of it for a second because I was I was head to head with Kyan, Kyan Madara, and then suddenly my shit just froze on screen again, and so I had to check my system to make sure that it's not hot and it's not freezing constantly or however the hell it is that's going on with this thing now. <sighs> Thank goodness I was not the host on this one again. I was not the host for any of these sessions because this made this a hell of a lot harder to try to figure out and coordinate. So while I had to turn my system off and then turn it back on and reconnect, that's why I had Dino and Lighten My Spirit spam me as much as possible. That way I could have as many entry points as possible back into this clan battle session. Meanwhile, while we were there, I gave them a visual play-by-play -play on what they needed to do and how they needed to do it. So even if I can't be there physically in order to instruct them, I can still be there verbally in order to make sure and guide you all to where you need to be at. That way it doesn't become, it doesn't get hard over time. So it's not like you guys don't have a guiding light. I'll still be here alongside you even if I can't physically be there for a few seconds. So I was able to reconnect. I got a status on how the score is looking and what it is I need to do. I mainly just went right back to being a destroyer, doing destroyer things, and boop, bop, boop, I landed right smack dab in the middle of a spawn, almost a spawn trap. Got myself right out of that shit, and right back into the clan battle I went, and we picked the pace back up in our favor, and slowly tried to regain the momentum that was heavily driving furs. That one we were able to fight back for a huge majority of the clan battle, and able to accumulate an astronomical point gap here during the whole totality of Conquest. It, uh, honestly, with how the outline felt here, this felt very similar to how the match, the, the Conquest portion of CEG and AOC was once upon a time when I wrote out that outline for me and Darkrai to be basically be the glass cannons of that thing in order to tackle pro skills in Aswin. And while just as hard as fighting Aswin and pro skills, it actually didn't it wasn't as hard because I didn't feel like I had to go into like a whole super sweaty try hard mode in order to make sure that I'm giving it 110%. It was all finally just coming naturally. On that one, the point gap there we had against Furs was honestly hi actually higher than we had it the first time we fought Furs. Because the point thing when I told Sazax about it, the, the point outline and the way the teamwork functioned was just as, symbi was just as symbolic if not more so in the point gap accumulation because here we were able to crack 300. The first time we had fought them way uh, long ago uh, the score then was about 300-302 I believe. Here the score was able to go well above well above 300 and barring the disconnection that had happened right at the beginning of the game rather than in mid-game like it did the first time. It was able to not affect that much of the momentum in the gameplay. It, did, it honestly didn't affect that much momentum in the gameplay. And so it didn't drop off and then pick back up. It was able to stay consistent and there was consistent communications amidst this. So it was just mainly missing one person, but still keeping that same flow of momentum going. 
this I liked. I had sat for a good while, and I had com compared the scores with Sazax, who was with us during the first time we had fought Furious. And she was saying that it was a better it was a better outline that it happened this time as opposed to the first time because momentum did like I said momentum did not drop. And so I think it was overall a better successive run for Conquest this go than the first go. And then next that will bring us into round three, which was the team death match. First is host tax Matt pick, which was corrosion as the finale. Here I was able to actually I was able to get my thinking in order. And we were able to settle upon an old strategy I had used against Elite Legends in order to help us out here with the outline for battling furs. I was going to use a similar outline I used against TFL, but any of the outlines I used for TFL all basically didn't work for any of the Team Deathmatch portions against TFL. All of the ones for Elite Legends, despite how short we came up in it sometimes, all actually proved to be vastly effective, and so I stuck to having all those in my back pocket with EL or EO, however you want to look at it, for the longest time because it saved a heck of a lot of time and thinking up a lot of ideas on how to tackle overpowered players in a huge kill kill spree environment. So boom, bada bing, basically playing the buddy system again was the key factor here in getting kills on the board. Here, Star Adjutant was able to play Devil's Advocate and keep dancing around in front of him long enough to allow me or Spirit or Dino to get behind enough people enough times in order to keep stacking kill counts in our favor. In the process of this, it also allowed us to keep catching them off guard and keep singling them out little by little. And to keep getting to their medic, because their medic kept making themselves exposed for very few intervals of time which you have to systematically seize right as it comes up. The kill count has started stacking in Furs' favor very quickly right at the get-go, but we were not far behind them. There was also a drop-off point that had happened when Marvin, I believe, disconnected from the match. And so it dropped from a 4v4 briefly to a 3 versus 3. Um, also, at the beginning of the Team Deathmatch session, I forgot to say, since Bosnian had to get ready to head out for work or do something IRL, then it dropped the clan battle outline from a 5 versus 5 to a 4 versus 4. And so it was a 4 versus 4 at Team Deathmatch's launch, for those that are trying to keep tabs. And then when Marvin had the drop off point, that was when it became a 3 versus 3 until Marvin could connect. And so during that time frame, I can't remember if Spirit sat out or if Dino sat out, one or the other. And then we ran um, kind of like a modified turtle strategy. So it's like running it without it, without the third person there for a heavy hitter. So you got the one guy that's going to be a very blunt guy. You're going to see, hey, woo, look at me. And then I'm going to try and be that guy that comes in with the flank. Although I can't do that a lot of the time since Gunners already has it scouted, which is why he's playing a damn scout. So that strategy didn't work, and then before we knew it, they managed to start stacking kills against us and ended up being double the score. And blah 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 blah, I was apparently the last kill, so that happened, and so we lost Team Deathmatch, and so it's the second time we lost a straight flush against Furs. All in all, that was the name of the jam, and that's the whole clan battle that had happened here today. <sighs> Ooh, I feel so much better. That's everything. That is actually everything about the clan battle. I have no real complaints about anything about the clan battle. I was hoping we could at least get one win on the board, even if we ended up losing the whole clan battle overall, but those are the breaks of the clan battling regiment. And so I look forward to whenever it is the next time we can probably lock it up against Furs or another clan battle. Another clan in the future. Oh my gosh, my brain. My brain. So I'm going to take the opportunity here in order to reflect on all the pros and the cons in the clan battle and see how our newfound friend here can probably help us grease the wheels of victory so we can keep on the highway to victory instead of keep taking detours on all these little side roads and unnecessary drive-bys and all that nice uh, driving monologuing ideas that I'm not thinking of right now because my mind is foggy as hell.
But barring the fog, I know I see so much clearly because I'm just so happy to have all of that off my chest. Oh, like you don't even know. Uh, but anyway, I will be around should you guys need to find me. For any more questions or things, you can always seek to find the actual link here to the TAC founding channel on Rodimus Prime 86 or here on the TACT family channel itself at TACT Productions Incorporated. Y'all already know our jam. Leave a like, hit that like button, subscribe, blah 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 y'all already know the jam of how YouTube does this thing. Y'all have a good one ahead out there. And as always, till all are one.